Okay, I'd like to welcome everybody uh, to uh, the emergency management meeting for uh, the 24th of April. And uh, we're going with our, our new format agenda um, to keep things uh, moving along. So I'd like to welcome you all. And today so far we have um, myself, Carol, uh, Roger Marcou, John Decker, um, Angie, uh, Ron, Roger, Susan, Paul, Amy, and uh, Michael uh, from Green Mountain Access, and Karen. And uh, Brad is unable to make us make the meeting today due to a call. Uh, so Ron's going to give uh, the SEOC uh, report. Uh, from today's call. Thanks, Carol. Yes, uh, welcome everybody. And we are continuing these weekly meetings. I'm also thinking of the um, state consolidating their meetings a little bit. And so in, in the back of everybody's uh, mind, think about the purpose and intent of these meetings. We do want to keep communication up um so at least for the next two weeks uh we'll continue to do these fridays at 3 30. after that um it looks like the governor is going to be dialing back some of the restrictions so we might be a little bit more stable and not have things to talk about as much uh, but we do have things to talk about today so at two o'clock the state eoc had a quick quick list of things they're doing with the state. They're, they still have the state EOC open and activated. It's all virtual, but it's open 24 seven, I think, uh, trying to move with the governor's moves. Um, and as far as I know, the major changes today from the governor, we're increasing the construction site people from two to five, requiring training of all employees that do report for work, uh, including one designated safety officer to enforce the rules for distancing and masks. Uh, it's unclear whether VOSHA would enforce that. And uh, for example, the town's considering a paving crew coming into town. Uh, who's responsible for enforcing? Is it just the paving crew or is it the town as well since we're hiring the people? So those are kind of some of the details as we get back to work. Uh, it does not look like those safety precautions will be uh, lowered, uh, even if job duties and jobs are opened up. So somebody's got to be in charge of enforcing masks and distancing. So we'll work on that. That's kind of the newest thing that happened today. Uh, the state's working with the National Guard on food. So if there's any food needs that in the community that aren't being met by the existing uh, agencies, then the uh, state EOC could be called for uh, additional support. Um, we are, Kim and I are just going back and forth about what it means for the town office to say you can have five people. Does that mean five people in the building max? Does that mean um, everybody has to be separated by room still or six feet? Or is it even our town office big enough to separate people because you're always crossing each other's paths, those kind of things. So we'll be working on that this week. Uh, the statewide police calls volumes are down, but um, as far as I know, they're they're putting word out about scams. So if anybody in the community hears phone calls or scam emails, those kind of things, um, make sure they're from reliable sources. And I think that's it from the state. Uh, they do always refer people to the VEM uh, dot ver.vermont.gov i think it's called website for vermont emergency management where they keep updating uh, faqs and trying to keep up with the uh, summary of all the protocols that people are supposed to be following it's still a stay at home order um, and i think that's it from the state meeting so just i'll turn it back to carol okay thanks ron um do you have more to add uh from uh the town impacts or is, are you all set yeah I, I think i'm good like i said if the highway crew is getting back to uh, almost regular work they were back to that uh, earlier this week with the up to two people on site now they can go up to five 
Uh, Amy can speak to the library's planning, I think. Um, and like I said, we're still trying to figure out about the town offices, but all public buildings and all town facilities are still closed. And um, I think Kim is debating appointments only for land record searches. So that is about the only flexibility we have so far getting to the town office is, um, is by appointment on emergency you know, uh, transactions where there's something critical or somebody's gonna be hurt financially if something can't get done through the town office. So Amy, did you have anything on library? Yeah, um, so today the governor um, had in his addendum on number 11 um, that libraries may um, start doing curbside. The Lamphere Library is still not planning to do curbside until May 15th, and we're still kind of evaluating what that's going to look like. Um, it's a huge controversy within the library community, just um, in general. But I also did um, just get out of a webinar um, about guidelines for libraries reopening, and it was led by um, people from all over the country. And right now there is an ongoing research uh, group that is very specific to library and museum resources to kind of gauge what COVID-19 looks like on library specific materials and how long it lives on those materials and um, how best to quarantine or disinfect. Um, there's a lot of considerations. The more I think about it and learn about it, the more there is to consider from everything like you're talking about, Ron, in the town office, when people, when we do reopen, this is, you know, curbside would be sort of phase one, but, um, you know, sort of how we staff the library, how we take care of our staff, and how we make sure that people are distancing legal ramifications, um, how we come up with policies, and how we make sure that those policies are, you um, equally enforced so if somebody if we require masks and somebody's not wearing a mask for example those types of things um and because libraries are typically free and open to all people how we can sort of manage keeping um keeping limiting access can we limit access can we have special hours for special populations um and who enforces and who cleans and all that kind of stuff. So it's there's a lot to think about um, in our small library before we even think about reopening. So that's why we're kind of trying to move out of Band-Aid mode here, but I'm just still in it. So it's uncharted territory. And um, so there's a lot, a lot to think about. And the trustees are also aware of these issues. So we're just trying to work with what we know, but also kind of pull the information from other libraries around the country and in fact around the world and that's what i've got for now yeah i think i think that's it uh, uh, I, I just want to remind people that um, the opening up or reopening is is something that we all need to be careful of we're, tr we're trying to understand what protocols to follow but the biggest thing that we found so far is having people call or communicate what their needs are. So that is no matter what the governor's doing and whatnot, if you hear of anybody in the, in the community that needs a specific need, please share that with me or Carol or Brad or Susan or somebody, and we'll try to get those resolved. Um, I just actually just wanted to mention one more thing that I'm also thinking about. And even as we're moving forward, there may be, um, changes that make us have to sort of take steps backwards in the plan as well. And so, you know, at the beginning, Ron, you said that maybe we keep meeting after two weeks or not, but I do think that this is still going to be a bumpy road after two more weeks. And if it, I think that the communication is, has been really important to me and communicating to all of you that even though the library is closed, all of our staff is still working pretty hard to, to keep library operations running, even though it's not forward facing with the public. So I, I do think that um, if there is a need to keep meeting after two weeks, that this isn't going to be over in two weeks. That's a good comment. Thank you. OK, thanks, Ron and Amy. Um, Roger, if you could give us an update, thanks. 
Roger Marcoux. Which, okay, I was wondering yes. which one of us. Yes. All right. Sorry. So we we continue to uh, um, try to be as visible as we can outside the office, and uh, uh, I think that there's really nothing of great uh, significance that's occurred uh, in Hyde Park that would be of concern. Uh, you know, by all means, you know, in some of the other places, uh, um, in a little bit in Hyde Park, we still have uh, our drug traffickers from out of state, and we're trying to address that as best we can. Uh, and um, there's a couple of our buildings that uh, that may be useful to the state. Uh, uh, you know, for example, in in uh, food storage or what have you. Um, during the crisis, so um, you know, I continue to uh, um, help help out any way I can. Uh, but otherwise, uh, everything is pretty pretty calm. Okay, thanks, Roger. Um, Susan, you can give us a, an update. Um, you know, again, things things are pretty quiet. Mostly, the select board isn't a very exciting thing to. You know, people don't pay a lot of attention to us, which is okay with us. Um, we don't, I think, you know, what's going to be interesting um, as property taxes are come due is to see what kind of, what kind of fall off we have, which every town in the state is, is looking at. And this payment will be interesting, but I think the one after that will be what's really interesting. Um, and to see what kind of a kind of a deficit, if any, um, <laughs> there's the optimistic view. Um, uh, communities are, go are going to be looking at, which of course means the deficits that schools are going to be looking at. Um, I don't. I don't think here other other select board folks on the phone can you think of anything. Um, we just we just we just kind of keep plugging along. I've looked at the mask thing, and that'll be when we get into that conversation, um, seeing what we can do as a town to help. But other than that, we're 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 just kind of rolling along. I know the road crew was they were very happy to be able to go back to work Monday, and I think now that for them with a small crew, we'll be back pretty much to normal. You know, just with distancing and needing to wear masks when they're around other people. So I think that that's going to feel better for, you know, for for everybody. Okay, thanks, Susan. Any other uh, select board members? No, I'm all set. Okay, then um, we might as well get into uh, uh, masks. Um, Karen or Angie, um, we we saw the email that uh, 165 masks uh, are uh, requested at this point, and um, I'm, I'm sure we can get those going pretty quickly. Uh, Ron and I were were talking, and um, uh, one thought was that the town could mail them out uh, like Stowe is doing. And and you folks could handle picking up, um, picking up masks and and that sort of thing, um, which I think is kind of what you were planning. Uh, either one of you. Yeah, Carol, it's Angie. Um, yeah, we did. I'm glad you quoted the um, survey results because we were able to reach uh, about 172 households in four days that it was up so it's not it, that's good and we did find out that um, out of 70 of the households they did need masks and that totaled to be about 165. Um, I don't know the process that the town wants to go about getting those. And I know Amy, Karen, and I talked a little bit this afternoon about it and would be glad to uh, rehash that conversation when you're ready. Um, but it is something that, you know, a, a third of the town is looking for support and help in. And who knows how much bigger those numbers would be if we had reached more people. Right. And this is Amy Olson again. Um, so the two kind of 
end points of, of this is the research was done. Karen and Angie put out the um, the poll and collected the information, but either mailing, you know, mailing I think is a great idea, but I think as far as sourcing those masks, I think that's something that the town might need to figure out as well. I, I don't have the resources for that. And I know that Karen and Angie with Hyde Park Helpers of Vermont are, are doing great work with the jobs that they are doing um, within the confines of what their sort of job description is for that. So I don't know that we really could figure out a way to source those masks. Yeah, this is Angie again. We have been fortunate enough with our um, first idea of being just the shoppers and the helpers that we have been able to service, you know, 15 families with over 33 trips of our, our 12 volunteers out and about. And um, it's really been working really great. The volunteers are amazing. And the residents who we have helped, they tell us we're lifesavers because they're allowed to stay home and stay safe. And um, we're helping them in a tremendous way. So it seems like that idea has been working really well. So however we can help with the mass, we're willing to, we just wanna make sure that it's feasible, if that makes sense. Um, this is Susan. Well, it seems to me the first thing we have to do is get them, is get them made. So with the people that we already have, and uh, Paul, if you're on there, if we reach out to, uh, to Sterling View, could we get some folks up there to make them? How difficult would it be to get 165 masks made? And then once we have them and we collect them, how do we distribute them? Um, mailing could get into quite a project. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, think about it, but that, that could certainly get into some kind of a project as opposed to, we said before, you know, we could just, Ron sent, sent me something that I think it was on CNN and some, some woman came up with, you know, that we do the mitten trees at Christmas. Well, this person just came up with a mask tree and she took, just put masks on the trees and people came and got them. Um, Again, we could do we could do something like that, you know, down at the down at the town office and just put some I don't know, figure out I, I think that I think what we want to find is a simple way to distribute them. And and mailing is um as someone who has dealt with bulk mailings for a lot of her life, mailing is not necessarily that simple. Right. Mailing's not simple, but there's also the concern that if you stick them on a tree, who is one person gonna come along and take everything and then the people who really need them aren't getting them it's it's you know the grassroots effort is my first go-to stick it under a tree or put it in the little free library on the rail trail or something like that but the concern was just making sure that the people who really need them are getting them and not somebody coming along and pawing through and grabbing all of them but that's just the, I, the devil's in the details in my mind right you don't have to put them all out at once you know, and, and again, if we know people that, and depending on how people responded to the survey, if we have the, you know, if we have the names of families that need them, if we know who all these people are, um, you know, we, we could, again, that, that would be helpful as opposed to it's just a survey. Most surveys, again, sort of how much information do we have? Yeah, I think, I think that, that the middle ground on this might be the the um, invitation process. So if we have a if we have a request that comes in, and that person says, "I have five five people. I'd like five masks," then we take the person's name and we could put it in an envelope or or a lunch bag or something like that, and have it at the town office inside that first door for pickup. Right, right. So there's kind of a, a middle ground between the free for all outside kind of thing and more of an invitation reservation, you know, like the takeout food style. This is Roger Mark, who we could also make the, um, you know, the, the porch lobby area at the Sheriff's Department uh, available to, and for those people that would like a mask that were shut-ins or whatever we could uh, probably work with uh, as we do with Angie's crew and uh, get them delivered. 
So yeah. um, any estimate about what part of our population isn't going to either be able to drive down or, or um, is, a, is afraid to drive down and get a mask? Yeah, well, that's- what I don't I have an F. Yeah, I don't, I, I think it's a multi, multi uh, method <laughs> solution to this. So um, the Sheriff's Department and having it distributed to people that they know are not able to get to the town office um, is a good, good way to make sure that those people get them. Uh, sort of the boots on the ground delivery service, if you want to call it that. The, the reservation one where we know of a need and people are able to get there, uh, we can have the bag concept. For the for the other folks that are left, uh, people that can't get to the town office, people that Roger, for some reason, doesn't have time to or can't get to delivery, whatever, uh, then we can use the mailing. Yeah, that sounds like that ought to cover just about everybody. Hi, hi, this is John. Can you hear me, John Decker? Yes. Yeah. So Lamoille, Lamoille Valley or Lamoille Family Center reached out to us um, right when we had our child, and they offered to mail masks to us. Uh, we thought that was a great idea. We took them up on that. So they probably have a system in place if somebody wanted to link up with them. But at the same time, if we mail them out, it also supports our post office, which, as we know, is uh, the center of controversy right now federally. So it couldn't hurt to support them as well. The problem with that is it costs money to, to uh, mail them out, uh, as Susan pointed out. Yeah, I th uh, the money part I'm not too concerned about. Um, in the in the essence that I, when you when you, we do the triage, I I, I don't think that's going to be a significant cost. It, even if it's like a dollar per mailing, it's still you know it's not going to be a bust the bank kind of number. Uh, as as if it's the last if it's the last option. I think that's part of it is making it the last option. But I need to go back to how do we get these made? Who do we need to reach out to get masks and the different sizes made? Yeah. Hi, I'm Paul. I'm Colonel View. And um, you had made a suggestion earlier that perhaps uh, some of our people here in the park, who we had about a half a dozen of them making masks here a couple of weeks ago and uh, three weeks ago, and we distributed them within the park here so that. Certainly, they're capable in, in doing that, and so I'll touch base with them. A couple of suggestions for distribution. Uh, if you're going to have some at, say, at a central location, the town clerk's office seems like a good idea. You know, just a cost sign at various places where people go, uh, whether it's the food shelf or uh, if uh, the, the folks on Meals on Wheels uh, could just make that, that information available to every door they knock on. Or even if they had a mask or two with them in a in a bag, you know. To, but important is also for people to be able to pick them up for close relatives and friends and neighbors that they know can't get out and they're picking them up for them, that they're available. So assign in certain congregate places where people people go um, might be helpful uh, to say where they can be found. Um, the other is always always a uh, Roland who has indicated he's willing to participate you know it's nothing like the radio sometimes to say if you want something free here's where you can find it um, and share it with you know one with somebody that's in need as well um, those kind of words are helpful on the air sometimes just a suggestion so we'll look into it from a story view point of view to see how many we can get made someone let me know how many they think they need um, and we'll we'll give it to the ladies here as a so something we can do for you. Thank yeah, that's it yeah. for me. And uh, Anne has been sewing masks. Uh, she donated about a hundred to um, Healthy Lamoille Valley, and uh, and she just got some more supplies in. So she'll continue uh, to make masks as well. And um, we can certainly put on front porch forum that uh, we're looking for people to uh, stitch masks. Uh, 
Um, I think it's a good idea having a, a sign out um, for people and also uh, media um, because then people know um, that they are available and who they can get them from, either uh, either a town hall um, or getting them mailed to them, uh, perhaps what's what ends up being convenient for them, perhaps sending one with a meal to um, that uh, the sheriffs are are uh, delivering um, with Hyde Park helpers. Um, I think that would be good. I, I would like to get this um, squared away so we can uh, get moving forward with it, though. So this is Karen. Um, I um, we can maybe go into our current volunteers and see if somebody in the Hyde Park helpers who have who has volunteered um, would be interested in taking this on. But I know Melanie, Angie, and I aren't able to coordinate this aspect of um in addition to the shopping and in addition to the full-time work that both melanie and angie do and the part-time work that i do and teaching my granddaughter and <laughs> all of that and it really needs a spearheaded a person to spearhead it and um i don't know if there's somebody within our um our volunteers that we haven't asked that question um but um, what you're, what's being talked about is is really big, um, and I don't know if there's anyone who actually, you know, part of their work for the town, be doing it for work. Um, and and I, it's not that we don't want to help, but we're at our helping capacity. And um, the the order of things in in setting up. Um, the organization that we did with the Hyde Park Helpers works like um, you're going to be looking for one, the person who's going to be in charge of getting the mask makers together to collaborate to make sure that they can be picked up from wherever that is. Two, um, going to collect those masks or having them dropped off at a central location. But then three, um, who creates that survey, who collects the data from the survey, and then how do you disseminate the data of the survey to the people that have the masks if it's not the same person. So there is a lot that goes in behind the scenes, the organizational piece, that um, somebody does need to spearhead. Okay, I was under the impression that uh, Hyde Park Helpers was doing the the survey uh, portion and uh, picking up, but I certainly would understand a few folks are uh, maxed out with all the volunteering you're currently doing and your regular work. Um, so we can uh, look at, at who else can, can uh, take this over. Yeah, it would kind of make more sense to put all the eggs in one basket, so to speak, a collective of a few people that could generate that survey. I don't mind making it. I can send it to somebody, but I don't think um, what Karen was saying is that I don't think this is a um, a branch that we're gonna branch off into being able to to handle with you. Okay. That, that's, well, not uh, yeah, definitely the three of us um, wouldn't be able to. But if if there was somebody, it could be under the Hyde Park helpers, but they just take it they take that part of it on. We just would need another person who, um, who you know, when we can, we can help that aspect. It really is, um, it feels big and it, it was big to get going what we got going, um, so. And I just have another cog to throw in the wheel and that is, are we asking people to donate the masks or if they are willing to make them but need the materials, it's just another, consideration oh absolutely um i mean the the intention was for mass donations um if uh if people want uh, money for uh, for supplies or uh i think uh ron i think the town was uh willing to do that is that correct Oh, we had a prior, yeah, we had a prior conversation about just getting this done, and we knew that 
donations were a part of it. Uh, material supply costs was another. The distribution could be another cost. So I think between Susan and I, and then maybe an offline conversation with Carol, uh, we could come up with an outline of how we could get this done based on what we know right now. And uh, then Paul will communicate what his resources are. And I, I don't think we need to talk about it too much more because I want to spend some time thinking about it, but the need is there and it's not a huge need. So it just seems very solvable. And, you know, the town can certainly take the lead on it. I don't have a problem doing that. And then we have enough resources around that just need to be pulled together and, and get it done. You know, make, see if we can get this solved by and get the mask up by next Friday as a goal. Yeah, this is Susan. I agree, Ron. I think if you and Carol and I have a conversation, we can figure out what we need. And Paul is say Paul's checking to see what they've got for for uh, mask maker volunteers. Um, three of us can have a quick conversation and come up with a list and assign a couple of tasks between you and I, probably Ron and maybe Carol as well, and get it figured out. I don't. On, on on top of what Hyde Park Helpers is doing, it's right and talking about. I don't I don't know that we need any more surveys. Um, we I, I think we got plenty of information, and I think just once it gets out there, then if more people start asking, we'll figure out how to fill the need. So so Susan, that sounds great. Um, just so you know, because you were asking earlier, the survey we did was just strictly informational and it wasn't taking names. And we made that clear in the survey. It's like just collecting yep. data for the town. So just right. so you know, you're aware of that. Good, good. Okay. That's why, yeah, okay. Okay, I think um, I, I agree as well. I think uh, if Paul can check and see uh, who may be willing to volunteer uh, to uh, make masks and and if there's any materials uh, financial need there um, can report back to one of us or all three of us and uh, and then we'll take this offline and uh, and get it done but I should uh, this is Paul I should have an answer for you by you know Monday morning work day and I can get back to to Ron and and then uh, he can contact you however you want to work it so that we know where we stand and what we can do from this end um, and then perhaps over the weekend we'll have our heads together a bit more with how we can use already distribution networks that exist where people are going to homes already whether it's meals on wheels or home health uh, for example uh, visiting nurse associate whatever we've got that's knocking on doors in high park there's no reason they can't have a half a dozen masks in there you know, in their vehicles, all all handily wrapped up, ready to go, ready to give to those that need them. So, just an idea to help uh, you know, help with the distribution process and to utilize what exists already. That's it. Yeah, Thanks. I think that makes. I think that's a good idea, Paul. Okay, great. Anybody have anything else about masks? Alrighty then. Um, any any final questions um, before we adjourn this this meeting? Any any comments from anyone? Okay. Well, thank you everybody for attending today, and uh, um, we'll send out a meeting notice uh, next week um, for uh, the next meeting. Um, Presumably, it'll it'll stay the same same uh, day and time, uh, but uh, we'll have to uh, just check in with how the state is handling their uh, their meetings. So thank you again, everyone, and uh, a few of us will talk uh, in the meantime, and um, we'll report back next week. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>